Good morning, and a greetings in Christ's name this morning. I certainly do welcome everyone here to our service this morning. Good to see all of you here. Good to see the church house so well filled. A welcome to the visitors that are here this morning. I welcome you to worship with us. And yes, it's the first Sunday of 2021. And I, uh, you know, I, I thought about, should I talk about the past a lot, the future? Does it help us to look back? Only. It only helps to look back if we can learn from it. That's what I believe. If we can learn, go look back and learn from it, it will. It does help, help us. Just a few things. You know, on, on January the 3rd of 2020... We had no idea what 2020 has for us. None. We didn't know. Today, we're on January the 3rd of 2021. Does anybody know what 2021 has for us? We don't. We don't. But we can put our faith into someone that does, right? We can. We can trust in Him because God knows He knows. You know, just just in starting, I I do need to just share a few things about 2020. A lot of changes, a lot of changes took place. And and, and, I'm going to just name a few of them. It was a challenge to schedule. It really was. And you know, I want to say this. I, I done this. I done this this year. I read it in a devotional, and I decided this is this sounds good. This this is what I want to do. By the way, our Sunday school lessons lesson was about being a servant, right, or a steward, a steward even more accountable than a servant, maybe. But we're to be stewards of Jesus Christ. And and I talked about the schedule being hard to make, so I. As a servant, as a steward of Jesus Christ, I want to commit myself to doing this. And that is this. I want to make my schedule as best I can for the next year. For, for, you know, normally, okay, for church things, we plan a few months ahead. And we want to plan as best we can, right? That's what I want to do. But then I want to ask my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to fill in the blanks. And then, you know what? If it, if I'm a steward of Jesus Christ, if I'm a servant of Jesus Christ, He alone knows what my day-by-day looks like or what your day-by-day looks like, right? He knows. He knows the future. So I want to commit my calendar. Brother Mark, you think it'll work? Commit the calendar to God. And here's why. Yeah, we can make a schedule as best we can. But I want to commit it to God. Then if God sees differently and the schedule moves a little bit or fluctuates some, it should not be stressful on us. Right, Mark? Maybe. (laughs) Mark says maybe. But if God's in control... If Jesus is in control, it should help me to allow the schedule to kind of fluctuate. And I shouldn't have to feel guilty if we done, if we done the best we can. And there's no need, I just put in my note here, there's no need to fret when unexpected things happen. Because God already knew that. So anyhow... Bethel, here, some changes. We had, there was times when we couldn't have service. We had an online service, a live stream service. I'm going to tell you this. I enjoy preaching a lot more when I see your faces than if it's all empty in here. It's more, that was more difficult. But, uh, you know, another thing, I, I couldn't help but think of this. There's a, 
number of families here this morning that have lost loved ones this past year. And we can go from, and, and this was interesting, think about this one. They went from 22 hours old, our grandson, Eric and Stacy's little boy, Caleb. Caleb was 22 hours old to 102 years old. Caleb was the first. Then we had Levi Miller Jr. Then we have John Miller. We have Roy Mast, Syl Hirschberger, Eli Yoder. They all passed on. And you know what? There's one thing that I can say about every one of these, and I do believe this from all my, with all my heart, that they are rejoicing. I believe that. I believe that they are rejoicing. As I thought of 2020, and as I thought of all the changes and all the fluctuation and all the changes of schedule and things that were scheduled, I thought of one verse, and I, I did not know the reference of this verse, but it says like this here, Hitherto has the Lord helped us. Up to this point, the Lord has helped us. And I, I had to look it up because I didn't know where to find it. And, I, and it's, it's actually found in 1 Samuel chapter 7. Samuel said this. He said that very thing. He said, Hitherto, or up until now, hath the Lord helped us. And you know what? We can depend on God helping us again this year. Let me just, let me just share a little bit about why Samuel said that. The children of Israel were gathered together. The Philistines figured out where they were, and they planned to attack them. They planned to attack the children of Israel. And the ch children of Israel said to Samuel, this is what they said, Seize not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of these Philistines. That's what they said to Samuel. And Samuel, the Bible tells us he got a young lamb. Actually, it says a suckling lamb, which was, it was not weaned yet. This is a young lamb. I could just imagine a perfect young lamb. He got, one, got a young lamb, and he put it on the altar and offered it to God. And as he offered, he, the Bible tells you he offered the burned offering holy unto the Lord. Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and it says the Lord heard him. It says that the Lord heard him. And then it says, at the same time, the Philistines were gathered and they were drawing nigh to attack the, the children of Israel. Then it says this here, and it says, but the Lord. Now listen to this. I love it. It says the Philistines were ready to attack. Samuel is doing the offering. He's crying out to God, and the Bible tells us he's heard. And then it says, this is reading. I'm reading it here. But the Lord thundered a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines. That's what the Bible tells us. And they were, they were dismayed, they were discomforted, they were smitten by Israel. And then Samuel put some stones together as a memorial. And he says, he calls it Ebenezer, that place. I believe that's what it is. And he says... Thus far has the Lord helped us. And you know what? We can trust that in, in 2021 that the Lord will help us because he's helped us thus far. And he will help us in this next year. And you know, it's also interesting that uh, Samuel done a, a memorial, a couple of stones Maybe after the message here, I'll open it up. Maybe there's something that happened this past 2020 that you would say, you want to say, you know what, I just praise God for the way this turned out. I just, I'm so thankful. Have a memorial because I was in so-and-so situation and God heard me and I want to praise God for it. I'd like to give you that opportunity. For this morning, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, if you would. Um, and I trusted this, I'm going to read one verse out of Romans 8. And I trusted this word, this verse would be an encouragement, uh, that we could be encouraged by it, motivated by it. 
And in, in this verse, talks about people that love God. And I trust this morning I'm talking to a group of people here that are God lovers. They love God. I trust that's who I'm speaking to this morning. Not people that only know about God. That, you know what, that would be a message in itself. Not people that only know about God, but people that love God and they truly believe in God. That's what this verse is talking about. That I'm about, and this is for people that have received that wonderful gift of Jesus Christ and have eternal life through Him. Stand with me, and here is what I would like to do. I would like for us to look at Romans 8, look at verse 28. Find Romans 8, verse 28, if you would. Romans 8, verse 28, and I would like to read this verse together. Romans 8, verse 28. Let's start. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that hitherto you have helped us. Now as we look into a brand new year, start a brand new year of 2021, God, I pray that we can claim this verse we just read. That we know that all things work together for good for us who love the Lord. So Lord, we invite your presence here today. Guide and direct my thoughts as we talk about this. Lord, we just, I just pray that your name can be glorified, your name can be lifted up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that what love God. You know, this verse, like some other verses, are verses that when we have difficulty, when we have struggles, when we have challenging times, it's one of those verses that we cling to. We can cling to. And I know there's Many of you here that have had struggles in the past year cling to a verse like this. And we can cling to it. Let me just describe it like this as a sailor would out of the rough sea on a lifeboat. We can cling to verses like this. As we look at this verse, there's numerous different things that I want to point out. First of all, I pointed this out already. But this verse has a few requirements. Did you notice that? It is for those that what? Love God. It is for those that love God. So we need to love God. And all things work together for good to them that love God. This is a promise and I love the way it begins. It says, we know. We know that all things. We know. And you know what? If, there's ever, if there was ever a time that it was necessary for us to know what we know, does that make sense? It's today. To know what we know. To know what we believe. It's important. It's important to know what we know and to know what we believe. And this is a promise that we can trust in, that we can know that all things work together for good, them that love God. Jesus said this, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. It is important that we love God, and then we can know that everything that happens is filtered through the hands of God. And I want to talk about that a little bit more later. I also find it interesting that just a few verses before the verse we read here in, in verse 28, there's another verse, and this verse tells us something that we don't know. Verse 26 says this. He says, 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we, <coughs> excuse me, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. As a believer, and you know, with some of the things that we went through with being sick and with being um, maybe even losing family, family members, there's a time when we scarcely know how to pray. It happens. It's happened to me. And it says here that we can call on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will intercede for us. <clears throat> As a believer, we are not left on our own resources to cope with our problems. No, we have the Holy Spirit within us. We can ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for us and according to God's will. And we can bring our requests to God. And we can trust that He will always do what is best for us. And again, we do not know. We do not know the future. But we can trust the One that holds the future. Holds the future in 2021. God is in control and we know that God is in control because we have a promise that says, we, and we know that all things, all things are under control of God. You know, when we are deeply troubled, when we are deeply struggling, <clears throat> my emotions and my feelings are not very accurate to go by. They're not. But let me tell you, we have someone that is willing to take that and walk with us and journey with us, and that is God. God is in control of everything. And this is a promise, and we know that all things, and that is a promise from, from God, that they will all work together for the good of them that love God. And it's also a divine promise. This promise is from God. It's from the very God that created the universe. He promises. He's the, from the very God that when Samuel prayed, that was, he was heard. And this, <coughs> this very God that thundered, a great thunder that we can trust in. He knows what, he, what, what is best for us. He is working for us. We can count on that, that he will help us. And just a few more things as I thought of I thought of God being in control. A few things that I want to share. That this is still the same God that many, there's many, many stories in the Old Testament that we could turn to where God showed up in a powerful, powerful way. Brother Mark said this morning, talked about Elijah, about, about God speaking to Elijah in that still, small voice. And I also want to share a little story about Elijah. And this is one that's very, very familiar with us. But what I want to say, James says that Elijah was a man like unto us. And he prayed, right? And he prayed, and he was heard. Well, another time that, he, that God showed up in a mighty, powerful way was on Mount Carmel. And on Mount Carmel, the odds were stacked the wrong way. There was 450 prophets of Baal. 450 men that worshipped idols. And Elijah was there with these 450. And he told these prophets of Baal that they should build an altar. And they did. And they built an altar and he, and, he, and he told them, don't light it with fire. He said, call upon your God. Call upon Baal and get him to light the altar. Get him to light it up. And they did. And they called on Baal. They called on Baal and they screamed and they danced around to the point where they cut themselves with knives. That The, the Bible tells us that the blood started to gush out. But no one answered. Nothing happened. 
Then Elijah, he said, come near. Just come near and look. And then Elijah went and he built an altar out of stone. The Bible tells us he put wood on it. He tells, the Bible tells us he put his offering on top of the wood. Then he says this, go get water. Go get water. Wherever he, they had to go get water. It was very dry. But he said, go get water. Four chars, four barrels, whatever it was, and dump it on the altar. Exactly the opposite of what we would do if we wanted to start a fire, right? <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is kind of scratchy. Exactly the opposite. Then he says, do it a second time. They done it the second time. Do it a third time. They done it the third time. They dug a trench around the altar. And they, 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 they watered down this altar so much that the very trench out around the altar had water setting in it. That's how saturated it was. Then he said, then Elijah said this, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that thou, that thou, O Lord, art God. And he cried out to God. And fire came from heaven. And listen to what it did. It burned up. It consumed the burned offering. It consumed the wood. It consumed the stones. Have you ever seen a fire that consumed stones? This did. It consumed the water. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it licked the water up out around the trough. When Elijah needed God, God showed up. And when the people saw this, said, Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. And we, this morning, we went, read the verse that we know that all things work together for them who love God. My friends, if we love this same God, whatever we go through, God will help us. God will guide us. God will direct us. <laughs> In verse, uh, verse 31 of Romans 8, it says, Who shall be against us? What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who shall be against us? You know what? If God is for us, we can be one among 450 prophets of Baal, and we still be successful. Now, this verse also says all things. It says all things work together for good to them that love God. I want to make this something very clear. I don't want you to go from here saying that Larry said it was good that uh, you take whatever you want. Um, So-and-so person passed away. It was good that I had an accident. That's not what I'm saying. That is not at all what I'm saying. But I will say this. If we love God and if we trust God, he will take the good things that happen to us and weave them together and make with the bad things that happen to us. And he will weave them into something great. Jay, I hope you don't mind if I say this. But I've heard Jay say this a few times. And I think if Jay would agree with me on this. Jay was a very sick man this summer. And I believe he sought the Lord because he said, he just said it this morning. He said, it refreshed me and my walk I'm not sure if I can say it word for word, Jay. You can correct me afterwards, but my walk is deeper. I'm going to say it that way. Kind of refreshed. Kind of, he said, kind of rebooted. Jay, God took that bad thing, right? And he wove it together with something good. And today, and today, Jay would testify that his walk is deeper than what it was before. And remember the verse. And we know that all things work together for the good if we love God. You can add to that at the end of the message, Jay, if you want to. So again, I'm not saying that it's good that bad things happen. But I am saying this. God takes those instances and he weaves together 
and make something beautiful out of it. You know, and I personally have had things happen in my life. And I, I don't want to open at the end of the message here for any one of you that wants to share something. I've had things happen in my life that uh, didn't good, feel good at the present. It did not. But I look back on it. God was shaping me, molding me, helping me. And it's, he's not done yet. I know that for a fact. But I want to claim that we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. The key thing is that we love God. That is the requirement. <clears throat> loving God. I have a few verses on loving God. The First Corinthians 8, 3 says, But if one loves God, one is known by him. James 1, 12 says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when, we, when he is tired, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised him that loved him. You know, as I thought of this whole thing about everything working together for good, my thoughts went to one more verse. That's found. This verse is found in the Old Testament. And that, this verse says like this here, it says, As for you, you mended evil against me, but God mended for good. It said, as for you, you mended evil for me, but God mended for good. Can anyone tell me who said that? One clue is he said it to his brothers. Joseph. Joseph. Think about it. Think about this. Joseph said that to his very brothers. He said, as for you, brothers, you mended evil for me. But God meant it for good. And if we think about that for just a if we think about the life of Joseph for just a moment, and I would like to, for just a moment here, think about this. A young lad, 17-ish years old, going out to see his brothers who were keeping sheep. And the first town he went to to find them, they weren't there, so he had to go even further. But when, they came, when he came to his brothers, his brothers hated him. And they threw him into a pit. Rejected him, his own brothers. The same ones that he said later, you mended evil, but God mended for good. So he was put in the pit. From the pit they sold him to some Midianites. And they took him to Egypt, where he was sold as a slave. At one point, Joseph was at home with his, with his father, and he was kind of the favorite son, we could say, to his father. A few, I'm going to say a few weeks, I don't know the time frame here. He was a slave in Egypt. And he was hired or bought by Potiphar. And this is the interesting thing. He never forgot his God. As we go through, think about Joseph, there's, there's one thing and I'm going to share this now, that I would like for us to be committed to for 2020, and that is to have integrity. And that's one of the reasons I want to share this story. Joseph was a man of integrity. And he was hired by, hired by Potiphar. And, and, and he was a captain of the king's royal guards. And the Bible tells us because Joseph was there Everything that he did, God blessed. So Potiphar was blessed by having Joseph take care of his gardens, his fields, his household. Everything he did, God blessed. Joseph was in charge of Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife started making advances towards Joseph Joseph refused to respond, and she got very angry. Made up a lie about him. Now he's a slave. That's pretty bad, right, being a slave? And now she lied about him, and he's put in where? Prison, dungeon, whatever. He's put in a prison. In prison, he's not guilty, but he's still in prison. In prison, 
Soon he's overseer of the rest of the prisoners. Again, God blessed him. And he, again, he had integrity. He, had, he was faithful to his God. <clears throat> he became friends with a few men, and he interpreted their dreams. And the one went back to work for the king. And he told him, when you go back to the king, you tell him about me because I'm innocently put in prison here. The man forgot him for a couple years. So Joseph was in prison for years. And then he came, went from prison to being the second most powerful man in Egypt. And I believe it is largely because of his faith in his God. Now he stands in front of his brothers and he says... As for you, you mended evil against me. But God mended for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive. Joseph saw that he was put in his position to save his family from the famine. So this morning, just in closing here, I would like to, first of all, challenge myself. I already told you one of my things that I want for this year, and that's, just make my schedule as best as I can, but then be flexible if God changes it. The next one is this. I want to be a man of integrity for this next year, for 2021. Joseph was a man of integrity. I want to, my, my longing, my goal is to have the integrity Joseph had. Integrity, what does it mean? What does integrity mean? Anyone would give me a definition? One of them is this. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. That's integrity. Tony Dungy says it this way. Integrity, the choice between what's convenient and what's right. The choice between what is convenient and what is right. And I don't know who wrote this, but I thought this was very, very good. Just listen. The person that wrote it said like this, If I could teach you one value in life, it would be this. Success will come and go, but integrity is forever. Integrity, integrity means doing the right things, the right thing, at the right time, in all circumstances, whether or not. Anyone who's watching. It takes having courage to do the right thing, no matter what the consequences may be. And listen to this one here. He writes, Building the reputation of integrity takes years, but takes only seconds to lose it. Never allow yourself to do anything that would damage your integrity. My friends, Let's make that one of our challenges this year, to have integrity. To have integrity. Again, the definition is the quality of being totally honest. Being honest and having strong moral principles. That's what integrity, if you, if you look it up, that's what it, what it means. So my first challenge is the challenge of integrity. And this is a few more that I just have for myself. I want to be determined... To trust God. I want to be determined to trust God because we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So if I trust Him, if I want to, if I love Him, I will trust Him. So I want to be determined to trust God. The next one I have is this. I want to also be determined to be thankful. Determined to be thankful. You know, we, we, there's many, many situations that we may complain about. There was probably many, many situations in 2020 we could have complained about, right? But there's many, many situations where we could be thankful to. So I want to be thankful. And then the fourth one is this. And this word I struggle with, well, how I want to word it. But I word it like this. I want to live courageously. For the Lord. I want to have courage as I live for the Lord. That's my goal for 2021. 
And I would like for that to be your goal as well. Courage, live courageously for the Lord. One message I listened to recently said to live gritty. To live gritty. That means to, I'm going to say, a lot of you will understand, have a little angst. You know what angst is? Be passionate about being a servant for Jesus Christ. We're all servants or stewards, right? Be passionate about it. Be a little greedy. Live courageously. Don't wait for things to happen. Make them happen. I was challenged. I shared it in the Sunday school class. I was challenged by a man in Florida. Claire and I were out fishing. And I was challenged by this man because we... He was, they were fishing down, there's like a pier thing where you can fish along, and he was fishing further down, they walked past us on the way back, and he stopped and we chit-chatted for a little bit, <clears throat> and <clears throat> then it was about fishing, you know, how yeah, did you catch it, how do you fish, yeah, yeah, that's what it was for a while. Then, he, then I think I asked him, so what's your occupation? He says, I'm an Uber driver. Oh, okay, well, we use Uber occasionally, in Florida we do. He says, oh yeah, I'm an Uber driver, and the reason I'm an Uber driver is because I can share Jesus. That's what he said. And he said, then he said this as we were talking. He said, you know, talking about being courageous. He said, you know, if I go to a 7-Eleven store and I buy something and I walk out and I have not shared Jesus with the clerk, I get tears in my eyes. That's what he said. It's like, wow. It was like, wow, for me. Who am I? What am I doing? Oh, you want to say, well, you know what? I want to be very careful. I don't want to be too salty and yada, yada. Oh, yeah, come on. But he says, one of the rules is for Uber driver, they can't talk politics and they can't talk about religion. And there was a few more. But he said he has over 4,000 rides and his rating is a 4.7. And he said, I share Jesus with a drunk that I pick up. And he had some amazing, amazing stories. Picked up a girl that said, he asked the question, I think, if I remember correctly, picked this lady up at a bar to take her home. He asked her, how are you doing? She said, I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to go home. I'm going to end it all. She was in the dumps. She was going to commit suicide. This man said, I shared with her the love of Jesus Christ. And I talked to her. And before she left my vehicle, she had accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Let's live courageously. Let's be gritty. Let's share in 2020. My friends, I believe that it's even more important today than ever. I really do believe so. Let's be the hands and the feet of Jesus in 2020. Let's not wait for it to happen. Let's make it happen. And I, I've got to say this. Claire and I walked away from that couple. It was a man and a woman. We walked away. We actually, he wanted to exchange phone numbers, and we did. We walked away from that couple, and we were encouraged. We were challenged, yes, very challenged, and also encouraged, especially with his, and, and he had a demeanor about himself, wasn't pushy, wasn't salty. As a matter of fact, you think about his ratings of 4.7 out of over 4,000 rides, he can't be too salty or he would not have that rating, but he shares Jesus. So, let's be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And just in closing, let's re also remember and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and them who are called according to his purpose. Let's stand and pray. <clears throat> Lord, we bow before you today. At the beginning of this new year, 2021, and Lord Jesus, we thank you for your promise that you will walk with us we can put our faith and our trust in you. And I pray for each one of us here this morning, or everyone that's listening, wherever they may be this morning, God, I pray that for 2021, 
we could have integrity. We could have integrity, that we could be courageous. And we could share the gospel with other people that we intermingle with. And Lord, I pray that as we leave here, that you would guide us. You would direct us and you would lead us. And you would help us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to trust you. Because we know that all things work together for good. If we love you, we want to trust you. Help us to be thankful, Lord Jesus. So guide us, lead us, help us. And Lord, we, I know there's many, many people here this morning. This verse that we just read is for all those that love you. So the people here this morning, I trust that every one of them loves you. So I pray a blessing on each one of them. Guide them and lead them. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us here. Thank you for your guidance and direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.